Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Soybean Innovation Lab's first webinar of 2020, Critical Success Factors for Soy Dairy Development and Scaling. My name is Amy Karyanikis. I am the Communications Manager for the Soybean Innovation Lab and will be your moderator today. Today's webinar is sponsored by the Soybean Innovation Lab, a U.S. aid Feed the Future initiative focused on improving soybean production and utilization in sub saharan Africa. Today, we are joined by registrants from 48 different countries representing organizations within the private sector, academia, development agencies, and research institutions. Big welcome to everyone here with us today. Before we begin, I would like to give everyone a quick overview of the GoToWebinar software, which you can use to engage with panelists, ask questions, and access webinar resources. Whether you're using the desktop or web application, you'll see a questions pane on your control panel. Please type in your questions as they arise, along with your organization and country. We will collect all of your questions and address as many as possible during the question and answer session at the end. Questions that are not answered during the webinar will receive a written response after the webinar has concluded. On your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll also see a handouts pane. Expand this pane to access today's presentation materials and the webinar agenda. Depending on your connectivity, you may experience a lag in the transition of the slides during presentations. This presentation is available as a PDF in your handouts pane, so feel free to access it there and follow along at your own pace. I'd like to give uh, a quick introduction of today's panelists before we begin the webinar. Uh, first off, we have Maggie Mzungu joining us. Maggie is the nutrition lead for the Feed the Future Malawi Agricultural Diversification or Ag Div activity. Maggie will be giving us a brief overview of the soy cows and kits. Thank you for joining us today, Maggie. We also have the privilege of Charity Kambani Banda joining us today as a panelist. Charity is a nutrition specialist with Feed the Future Malawi Ag Div. She will be going over data collection and training so that all soy entrepreneurs are required to attend, as well as the financial results to date. Thank you for being with us today, Charity. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce you all to Liz Venable, the Economics and Evaluation Consultant for Feed the Future Malawi Active. Liz will talk a little bit about one particular soy kit entrepreneur, Alice Patau, and how she utilized the sales and production data she had been collecting to increase her profits. Liz will also be moderating our Q&A following all of today's presentations, so please remember to ask your questions in the question pane, and please include your organization and country. Thank you for moderating and presenting today, Liz. We are also very excited to have Cesar Cacciali joining us today from Catholic Relief Services. Cesar is the project manager for nutrition, household economic strengthening, and case management. Cesar will be presenting on how soy kit entrepreneurs can utilize credit to start up their own business. Thank you, Caesar. And last, I'd like to introduce Jeremy Venable. Jeremy is the Director of Strategic Partnerships with Feed the Future Malawi Agdiv. He will talk about how Agdiv successfully incorporates data-driven strategy into development programs. Thank you, Jeremy, for being with us today. Okay, so to get started with today's webinar, we'd like to launch our first interactive poll. We use these polls as a way to get your feedback and to get an understanding of the range of attendees here with us today. So for our first poll, uh, we'd like to know who's joining us today. Um, please select all of the answers that apply as more than one of these may describe you. We'll give everyone a few moments to record their answer. Okay, and we'll be closing the poll in three, two, one. Okay, and it looks like um, the majority of you work for a nonprofit. So that's good to know. Um, it, it's always nice to get a little background on our attendees uh, joining us for each webinar. So thank you for participating in that. Okay, um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, turn it over to Maggie to give us a brief introduction to the soy cows and kits. Maggie, please begin whenever you are ready. 
Okay, yeah, uh, welcome everybody. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, two technologies that we use for processing of uh, soybean into uh, milk or even yogurt or other related pro uh, products. But before I talk about the soy kit and the soy cow, I'd like to talk about uh, why soy milk is important, uh, why it is important to process soy into milk. Uh, soybean or its related products, um, it's a very uh, nutritious source of protein and uh, it also provides income to households. And uh, why is it uh, a low cost uh, source of uh, nutritious products? Soy, soy milk or cultivation of soybeans, is, soybean it is easy to cultivate and uh, because it doesn't require a lot of input in order to grow uh, soybeans, uh, like fertilizers. To produce soybean, you only need uh, inoculants, which is cheaper than the commercial fertilizers that you find on the market. And uh, for Malawi, consumption of uh, soy-based products is very limited because uh, it, is, uh, it requires a lot of processing. Although soybean is widely cultivated in the country, uh, you don't find a lot of soy-based products on the market. And uh, in addition to that, if you find uh, some of the soy-based products on the market, it's either expensive or it's of low quality. But uh, soy processing for Malawi is a very real realistic feat. Why? Because I've already talked about uh, how it is easy to cultivate and uh, it's also an excellent source of uh, protein. So I'm going to talk about uh, the technologies that uh, the ADDIF project uses to pro process soy soybean into milk. And these are the soy cow and uh, the soy kit. Uh, the ADDIF project collaborated with the Soybean Innovation Lab to pilot uh, uh, processing of uh, soybean into milk using two technologies that I've talked about. The first one is the soy cow, and the second one is a uh, soy kit. So uh, the soy cow uh, is a so semi-automatic uh, food processing system that is mostly used for microprocessors to process uh, soybean into milk. The equipment is designed to provide a daily soy milk up output of up to about uh, 200 liters of soy milk, and it can go up to about 300 uh, liters. It depends on um, how hard uh, the, 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 the entrepreneurs have worked to produce that milk. But this is in an eight hour shift. The soy cow itself uh, has got a number of components. The first one is the grinder. And uh, the grinder is uh, what is used uh, to, to grind uh, soybeans. Uh, the process of uh, producing soy milk it involves, uh, first of all, soaking uh, soybean for a period of eight hours, after which it is ground uh, using the, an electric grinder or even a manual grinder. And after that, uh, the other uh, part of the soy cow is uh, a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker is uh, what is used to cook the slurry that uh, is uh, ground, uh, the paste that you grind uh, from the soybeans and uh, you use a grind, uh, a pressure cooker to uh, cook the, the paste. Then there's a filter press and uh, a water pump and a, uh, a, a multipurpose uh, boiler. And um, the source of power for a soy cow, it either uses gas or firewood. So the soy cow is a perfect fit for rural or urban areas. So uh, there are two types of uh, soy cows. There's a soy cow E, that one uh, you use electricity to power it. And uh, there's a soy cow M, that one is uh, manually powered. So it's good in that you don't need to use it in, a, in an urban setting only. It can only also be used in uh, rural areas. So it can also help to generate income for people in the rural areas. So the products that uh, you produce using the soy cow, it's either milk, 
that you process straight uh, from the slurry that you boil in the cooker, you process and produce the milk. Oleos, you can, eat, uh, you can uh, produce uh, yogurt from the soy milk and the byproduct is called okara. And uh, this okara can be used either for animal feed or even in other confectionery or like for making bread or cakes. Then there is a soy kit. A soy kit is like a smaller version of the soy cow. It's uh, basically made of uh, different sets of kitchen equipment. And uh, the components of the soy kit, uh, we have a manual cereal grinder. There is a pot, there is a bucket, there is a heat retention bag, which is also called a, a wonder bag. And there's a filter bag and some gloves and uh, some spoons and um, other items uh, that would facilitate the cooking. In an hour, a soy kit can uh, produce up to about uh, seven liters of uh, soy milk. And uh, to produce yogurt, uh, because it has to go uh, through an incubation process, it can take up to about eight hours. The soy kit is targeted for micro entrepreneurs, mostly uh, women at household level, because this is a household level equipment. So it's easier to use because the grinder is uh, manually powered and uh, it can even be used by one person. Uh, basically, a soy kit can be used by one person. The cost of a soy kit is around uh, $200. This is the initial cost that the active project uh, used to procure the initial set of set of kits that we piloted with uh, uh, some partner organizations. And um, currently, uh, we have deployed over 200 uh, soy kits through our partners who have uh, distributed them to uh, beneficiaries who are mostly women uh, through savings and uh, lending, uh, lending groups. And uh, some of them have been distributed uh, through um, care groups. So after the initial proof of concept with uh, the 200, uh, over 200 kits that we deployed uh, through our various partners. And uh, looking at the initial cost of uh, $200 and uh, the caliber of uh, the beneficiaries who we work with who are most women and uh, with uh, little income, we were able to replicate the soy kit uh, using uh, locally sourced equipment. We went around uh, the vendors in town to look for similar items. And uh, we were able to find uh, the items that make up a kit. Uh, the, the most item that we thought we wouldn't be able to find was a grinder. But when we went out, we were able to find a grinder and uh, the other components of the kit, we were able to source locally and easily through the local vendors. And the other item in a kit that we were also able to replicate was the heat retention bag or the wonder bag. This one, we used uh, some local craftsmen and uh, even women who, after looking at the initial uh, wonder bag that came with the kit, uh, they were able to find some similar materials and uh, they produced their own uh, wonder, uh, wonder bag. We tested this uh, second kit uh, to see if it will produce uh, soy milk of uh, similar quality to the one that is uh, uh, used that we procured through a Canadian company uh, called My, uh, My Nutrition Matters. And uh, the soy milk that we produced was of uh, equal quality, good quality. And uh, when we did a sensory evaluation, people could not differentiate between the milk that was produced by the first kit and uh, the second kit which we uh, uh, produce locally. And uh, after producing the local kit, we were able to bring down the cost to about uh, 80 to $90. So in the subsequent uh, presentation, you see the figures that uh, the income that uh, the entrepreneurs are making and uh, how, if they'll be able to uh, 
make uh, sufficient income to buy an additional uh, kit. And uh, lastly, I'll talk about uh, benefits of the kits. Firstly, I'll talk about the nutrition. Uh, soybean, uh, soybean is uh, very nutritious. And uh, even the milk that uh, is produced from the soy kit is equally nutritious. So it helps to contribute to nutrition of uh, uh, women and uh, children in the household. And in addition, in addition to that, it's, uh, it also contributes to income of the household because the soy milk that is produced by the uh, entrepreneurs, they don't uh, utilize it all by themselves in their households. This milk is also marketed uh, to nearby communities, schools, or hospitals. So this uh, helps to uh, bring additional income to the entrepreneurs. And uh, secondly, uh, the heat retention bag. With the heat uh, retention bag, there is a saving in terms of uh, fuel use because uh, the soy milk is only cooked for a period of about uh, five minutes on fire, after which uh, the pot is put in the wonder bag and uh, it uh, continues the cooking at the same temperature that it was on the fire for an additional 20 to 30 minutes. So the time that the pot is uh, on the, uh, not in the wonder bag, is the time that a woman saves in terms of uh, fuel use. And they can also utilize that time to do other household uh, chores. And uh, with soybean processing, if you process soybean into milk, you use uh, essentially everything in the soybean, starting from the milk that is produced uh, from the producing the soy milk. And uh, you can even make a uh, yogurt, as uh, Elia said. And the byproduct, the okara, is used as animal feed or used in confectionery. And uh, more importantly, over 80% of our soy kit entrepreneurs are women. So this is also a women's empowerment tool because it helps to bring additional income to the households, especially women, who are mostly uh, the ones who are providing in terms of uh, making, cooking the food. So if they have additional income, they'll be able to uh, bring uh, more money to the household, but also buy some other nutritious uh, foods that will help uh, with household nutrition. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. That was a great overview of the soy cows and kits. Um, it's now time to launch our next interactive poll. All right, what is the biggest challenge or constraint you see when it comes to running a successful soy dairy enterprise? We'll give everyone a few moments to record their answer. And we'll be closing the poll in three, two, one. All right, so here's our results. It looks like um, finding markets or lack of demand for product. Okay, in a little bit, we have business or financial management skills followed behind. All right. Well, thank you. It's important for the SIL staff and the AgDiv team to better understand what kinds of barriers face our soy entrepreneurs. So thank you. Um, before we continue, I'd just like to remind everyone to please type in your questions into the questions pane of your GoToWebinar control panel and include your organization and country. We're going to address as many questions as possible during the Q&A um, at the end of the webinar. As another reminder, this webinar is being recorded and that recording will be sent to you after we conclude along with presentation materials where, which are also accessible to you now in the handouts pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. Okay, and I'd like to turn it over to Charity Kambani Banda. 
Charity is going to discuss data collection methods, the trainings, and financial results Active has to date. And Charity, you're welcome to begin whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed what Maggie has presented to you. And uh, I'll first of all start with the uh, presenting to you on data collection process. For any or every successful business, there should be uh, records keeping. So what we did also to the soy kit entrepreneurs and the soy cow entrepreneurs, we trained them on how best to keep records. And these records were are kept in the very simple forms. We have designed very simple forms that are easy to use and easy to follow. And the forms have got different columns. We have got the, uh, a column that shows uh, soy milk production for that particular day or particular month. And we also have a column that shows sales, like how many or how much money they have made for that particular day. There's also a column for costs, or we can say expenditures. These expenditures may include rentals, uh, bills, labor charges, and any other expenses which they have been incurred for that particular day or that particular month. And we also have a column for profits. These are the net income, that's the amount of money which goes in their pockets as profits. After subtracting how much they have sold for that particular day from the expenses. So we collect this data on a monthly basis from all the entrepreneurs, both the soy kids and the soy cows. And as active, we work with our partners and through partners, we collect the data on a monthly basis. So ACTIV uses this data to monitor performance and also to evaluate the results. Now, for uh, before implementation of, of, of an activity by the soy kids or the soy cow entrepreneurs, they go through training. They are trained on how to process their products. First of all, most of, the, most of the time, the trainings are being conducted at active offices or at a nearest place or nearby lodges. The training mostly uh, con is conducted for two days and it involves uh, both theory and hands-on or practical sessions. Uh, when you say theory, we go through with the uh, uh, participants on all the processes or all the sessions that are supposed to know to be known. And then we switch on to hands-on so that they should practice on how to process the soybean or soy milk. Some of the topics that are covered are hygiene and sanitation. We make sure that the uh, entrepreneurs are aware or have knowledge and skills on food safety measures so that when they are processing the products, they produce the products that are safe for the consumers. So we go through with the uh, participants using the HACCP method, the hazard analysis, critical control points. We also train the participants on business skills, which include record keeping, financial, rec financial keeping, financial records, and all that is supposed to be known on business skills and knowledge. We also train the beneficiaries on the health benefits of soybeans. They should aware they should be aware on what are the benefits of the soy milk. Because if they are selling the products, they should know what are the benefits, what, are, what people are going to consume on the, and what they are going to get from that product. For example, soy milk is very nutritious and is, has, has got high protein content. And you know that the protein content is good for the bodies and it reduces malnutrition. So even if they are selling the product, they should be able to explain to the consumers the benefits of the soy milk. So uh, just to take you a little bit back, um, on a hands-on session, practical, we train the entrepreneurs on how, uh, for example, for the soy kit entrepreneurs, 
we first of all concentrate on the um, assembling of the soy kit so that all the participants should be aware of each and every part and every component of the soy kit so that you should be able to use it wisely. And then we also help them and teach them on how to grind the soybeans. And then we also do hands-on session on cooking the soy beans into soy milk. So both the soy cow and soy kit entrepreneurs are taken through the theory and also the practical session on how to produce soy milk or soy yogurt. Now, another important session that we, the uh, participants are also uh, being introduced during the training is the cost benefit analysis of selling the soy milk rather than the soybeans. For example, in Malawi, most of the people uh, sell their soybeans as raw because mostly there is lack of knowledge in how to process soybeans into other products other than the uh, soy flour. So we train them on how they can see the benefit of selling the soy milk or soy yogurt rather than just selling the soybeans. For example, a one kg of uh, a soybean is sold at $0.27, which is the uh, equivalent to 200 Malawi kwacha. And while uh, when they sell, they produce the same one kg of soybeans to soy milk, they produce 6.6 .6 liters of soy milk and at a cost of 760 kwacha, that is Malawi kwacha, which is equivalent to $0.97. And these expenses include something like salt, sugar, soybeans, and firewood, or even labor. So when they sell a liter of milk, soy milk at 300 Malawi kwacha, which is equivalent to Point three eight dollars they make a total sale of 2,000 Malawi kwacha, which is equivalent to $2.56, which is almost five times selling the so raw soybeans than selling the milk. So after subtraction or calculations, they get a net profit of 1,240 kwacha, that is Malawi kwacha, equivalent to $1.6. So instead of them getting $0.27 for a one kg of raw soybeans, they get a maximum of, or a minimum of 1,240 kwacha, or equivalent, which is equivalent to $1.6, which is really a huge profit for them. And considering all these calculations, when we are selecting the uh, soy, soy pitch or soy cow entrepreneurs, we consider two important uh, factors. These are, they should be able to read and they should also be able to write so that when they are able to understand when we are training them and they should be able to write and be able to calculate the mathematics or the calculations which are incurred in their business. Uh, data is collected from entrepreneurs, as I said already, from by the active uh, partners on a monthly basis. And when we collect this data, we convert it to graphical presentation in terms of how much soy milk has been produced for that particular month, how much are the expenses, and how much is the income are drawn, so that we should have and observe trend how the business or the performance is being done or is being going by the soy kit and the uh, soy cow entrepreneurs. So we come up with graphical presentations for both the uh, businesses. However, for, a, for every uh, business, even if it is successful, there are still some challenges that are being faced. As active, we also face some challenges. For example, uh, in some months, we uh, also experienced delays in data submission by our partners. How best do we solve this? Uh, we solve this problem by engaging the responsible partners to submit the reports on time. And uh, another challenge that we also face is that uh, most uh, of the entrepreneurs are in remote areas. Hence, there's poor network problem 
we cannot communicate frequently or maybe when you want to collect data you're trying to call them to send data or for them to submit the data mostly the phone calls sometimes are difficult therefore we utilize the vehicles that are office vehicles to go and collect the data from the cooperatives and also the soy kits and the, sometimes the entrepreneurs especially the soy kit uh, entrepreneurs are advised to send the text messages they are supposed to send data uh, through text messages so that even if the phone calls are hard but they are able we are able to get uh, text messages and uh, sometimes we also utilize some uh, our fellow workmates that have gone for example close to the place where the soy kits our soy cows are producing so that they also help us in collecting the data so that's how we also solve some of the challenges that we face as an organization. Now, I uh, will take you through the financial results of soy kits and soy cows. I will first of all start with the uh, soy kits results. Uh, on the graph in front of me, there are some months from January to December 2019. So an average, there's the average production of uh, soy milk in liters and the, also an average production of uh, an average profit, I mean, in US dollars, they printed in blue. Uh, those bars that are printed in blue, they are profits, and those that are printed in orange are uh, uh, prod, prod, average production in liters. So during the months from January to March, you can see that the production or maybe the profit is lower, even the production. Both of them are, have decreased or are low on the lower side because mostly the in, entrepreneurs are busy in their fields. For example, this is January and the busy, people are busy in their fields applying fertilizer, weeding and all sorts of uh, farm activities. And uh, after that, uh, from June, up to November, you can see an increase in both the production in liters of soy milk and also the profits. Uh, what causes this is because the season changes. Uh, when you go to June and July, there's an increase, yes, but not as the increase from as compared to August uh, to up to November. The cold season also affects the uh, the cost or the production and also the profit. Most people uh, don't like taking some cold drinks when it is the, uh, when the weather is not uh, hot enough. So from August to November, it is mostly the hot season. So most of the uh, entrepreneurs have also sold their produce. They have finalized harvesting and the, most of the consumers are able to buy, uh, to purchase the soy milk or the soy yogurt. That's why the uh, profit has also increased and the production has also increased because there's less field activities at this particular moment. And the, also, what is also caused this, uh, we also conducted the, uh, the review uh, meetings with the soy kit and also the soy cow entrepreneurs as active and also partners. So during the review meetings, we uh, gathered different uh, participants from different uh, partners. So it's like you are collecting, uh, you are having different partners from different uh, participants from different partners to have the session together. And during that uh, session, they share different experiences that are experienced that they experience in their business from their. Uh, communities so through sharing of those information some of them also get information they are being helped from the positive uh, impact that other uh, entrepreneurs are also experiencing in that way they also help them boost their business improve the sales and also increase the production and we have during that period from august we also had uh, we increased networking of the uh, entrepreneurs Entrepreneurs are able, we encourage them to be uh, able to associate with other uh, entrepreneurs, like maybe in terms of, in, in form of calling them by phones or maybe visiting them. If they hear that there's another entrepreneur that is doing well, 
we encourage them or motivate them to go and understand how best they are also succeeding in their business. That's what also has caused uh, increase in production and also profit during these months, apart from the seasonality. Uh, you can see by November 29, the soy kids entrepreneurs, the average was uh, 80 liters of soy milk produced per month. So that's a huge uh, production just by a soy kit. So an average monthly profits were in November were about 23 US dollars, which is equivalent to 276 US dollars per year. And the, uh, some entrepreneurs have been able to earn 80 to 100 dollars in a single month. And uh, you can see this is uh, at least a, a, a lump sum amount of money, which enables the entrepreneurs to repay the cost of a locally procured soy kit. Um, I, don't, um, uh, I think Maggie mentioned some of the entrepreneurs uh, got the soy kits by loan. And uh, for a locally assembled kit, it goes up to $80. And uh, if an entrepreneur is able to produce $80, just in a single month, will be able to repay the cost of the soy kit within a very short period of time. Uh, now I will take you through uh, the soy cow results. Uh, we have got five cooperatives that are running the soy cow results, that are running the soy cow, as Maggie mentioned, there's Kasekese, Tayamba, Luana, uh, Maiwatu, and Mitundu on that table. And uh, you see that Kasekese is producing an average monthly production of soy milk about over 330 liters. Uh, this is compared to uh, lowest uh, production by Maiwatu, which is 65 uh, liters of milk, uh, because uh, Maiwatu was uh, uh, renovating the factory recently. So most of the time, they did not do the production during that particular year, and they were mostly concentrating on uh, they are improving and uh, renovating the factory. Uh, just for your information, Maiwatu is also doing better uh, rather than or compared to all the five or the four soy, uh, soy cows, because it has applied for the uh, malleability of standards for certification. They want the Malibu standards to go and uh, review their factory and also to analyze their products so that they can be certified and so that their products can be found on the market shelf to increase marketing of their products. So even though they show low production of liters, but they, have, they are really doing good. Uh, for Mitundu, they, uh, they began the operations uh, recently after the other four cooperatives. That's why they are on the lower side in terms of profit, uh, an average profit of $8. They are still in the process, they are still learning on how best to produce, uh, meaning to make uh, soy milk and to make more profits. So when we assess all this, starting from November 2018 on in the, on, in the graph with Land of Me, uh, up to November 2019, um, the production is really low compared to the uh, soy capacity. As Maggie mentioned, the soy capacity is uh, about 200 liters of soy milk a day in an eight hour shift. And if the soy cows are producing that amount of liters every single day within seven days, I think there'll be huge production, but there is a low capacity. But however, the cooperatives also face challenges in terms of managing operations and finding large enough markets. Uh, we don't stop there as active. Active, we are also helping them. We are seeking to help them by providing the IEC materials. These are materials that are used to uh, increase awareness uh, during the open days. We also plan to conduct the nutrition campaigns that will also increase the awareness of the product and also increase consumption of the soy milk by the communities. 
and we also work with the farm radio trust this is the local radio local radio station which also help in disseminating information and air the messages to the communities and so so that they should increase the uh, consumption and uh, production of soy milk i think from me that's all thank you very much for your listening bye bye Thank you, Charity. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, we're getting a lot of great questions in. And we look forward to receiving more. Um, so keep them coming. Uh, it's now time to launch our next interactive poll. For this poll, we'd like to ask, what traits do you think contribute to a successful soy dairy business? Please mark all that apply. We'll give everyone a few moments here. Okay, and we're going to close the poll in three, two, one. All right. Yep. Uh, so it's pretty distributed well. These are all important uh, factors for a successful soy dairy business. So thank you. Thank you for your feedback. All right. So we'll have one more poll before we get into the Q&A session of the webinar. Uh, we're getting a lot of great questions again, so keep them coming. Um, and again, please include your organization and country. All right. And right now, I'd like to turn it over to our third panelist, Liz Venable. Liz will be sharing a success story of one soy kid entrepreneur in particular that used the data she had been collecting to improve the performance of her own business. Liz, please feel free to begin whenever you're ready. All right, great. Um, hi, I'm Liz Venable, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, we can go ahead and move to my um, first slide with data on it. Um, Charity has provided a great overview of our results so far, but what I'm here to present on today is um, how Active and its partners are using these data to help soy kit entrepreneurs improve their success. So the first graph I want to show you is a histogram of monthly soy kit profits for all of our soy kit entrepreneurs. One problem with looking at average production and average profits is that it hides a lot of the differences between entrepreneurs. So what we can see in this chart is um, different levels of profits that soy entrepreneurs have earned. And then the height of the bars shows how many times that level of profit occurred. So what we can see from this is although we're now seeing average profits of over $20 a month. Um, it's a bit of a skewed distribution. Uh, most of our entrepreneurs are clustered under profits of $20 a month. And then we have some entrepreneurs who are um, earning extremely high profits of $70, $80 or more in a single month. Um, Caesar's going to talk a bit more about the credit aspect of a soy um, kit program, but in order to repay the cost of a locally procured soy kit over a year, our soy entrepreneurs need to make a profit of over $7 a month. And in order to do it in six months, which is more realistic for a microloan, they need to be earning over $13 in profits a month. So we'd really love to see all of our entrepreneurs earning more than that minimum of um, $13 profits a month so that they can repay their soy kits in a reasonable time frame and earn some extra money to take home to their household. Next slide, please. Um, so we don't want even a small percentage of the soy kit entrepreneurs that we're working with to end up in debt and end up worse off than they would otherwise um, having participated in our program. So one of the things that we're using our data for is to understand why profits vary between entrepreneurs or from month to month. 
and try to figure out what can we learn from the success stories to help our lower performers improve. So looking at these data, we've learned a couple things. So first, looking at the traits that are associated with success. One thing we've identified is that profits increase over time for a given entrepreneur. So as they get experience, as they learn how to um, market their products, as they identify regular clients, soy um, kit entrepreneurs are often able to increase their monthly profits quite substantially. In a lot of cases where we see extremely low profits, like zero or even negative profits in a month, that's almost always in the first month of operation when an entrepreneur may have invested in working capital, but they haven't started selling a lot of soy yet, so they don't have income coming in yet. Um, and then over time, as again, as they gain experience um, and learn how to do the business well, their profits um, increase. We've also looked at some other things that we thought might be associated with success, such as which of our partner organizations the soy entrepreneur is working with or what district the partner is located in. And we were actually surprised to find that there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference by either partner or district. So even soy kit entrepreneurs who are located in districts where there isn't a lot of soy um, cultivation or you wouldn't think there'd be much familiarity with soy products seem to be able to cultivate successful um, businesses in demand for their products. So next slide, please. So another thing that we've used our data to do is to identify which of our soy entrepreneurs are some of our best performers. So who are those entrepreneurs who are consistently earning high profits from month to month? Once we've identified who those people are, we can go to them and we can find out what are some of the things that they're doing to be successful. Um, then we recruit those entrepreneurs to serve as mentors for other entrepreneurs. So new mentors, who are, uh, new entrepreneurs who are coming on board or entrepreneurs who have maybe been working with us for a while but aren't seeing the level of success that some of the other entrepreneurs are. Um, and one thing that we've found is that even just hearing about the level of success that some other entrepreneurs are achieving seems to be a bit of a stimulus for um, a lot of the women. And once they know what is possible, they'll often take it upon themselves to try to increase their production, be more ambitious in their marketing, and earn more profit. So even just the act of sharing other entrepreneurs' average sales and profits seems to have some encouragement effect. Next slide, please. So as just one very striking example of how um, this support using peer mentoring um, and networking can work, I want to give you um, the story of Alice Buteo. So Alice received a soy kit from us in May 2019. And for the first few months that she was running her soy kit business, she made an average profit of about $10.50 a month, which isn't too bad, but we knew it was nowhere near the level of what um, an entrepreneur could be making. So Alice was part of a group of women who we included in a refresher training and networking event um, where we brought in entrepreneurs who were new or who weren't performing as well. And we let them meet with some of the entrepreneurs who had the highest profits. Um, after attending this, Alice also took it upon herself to actually go and visit an entrepreneur who lived nearby who she knew um, was having a very successful soy kit business and to get advice from her on how to improve her business. And one of the things she talked about with this successful entrepreneur were ways that she could cook the soy to make the soy milk taste better, to reduce the beany taste um, that some of her clients were complaining about. Um, so Alice adopted these tips both from the networking event and from her meeting with the neighboring soy entrepreneur. Um, and she tested out the new techniques of cooking, made a new product, and she took it upon herself to actually do market testing in her community um, with her new product. And she found out customers liked it. They preferred the new taste. 
So next slide, please. So after adopting this new technique and doing the market testing, Alice was actually able to increase her production and sales considerably. So whereas before the networking and visit to this neighboring entrepreneur, she was making about $10 in profits a month. From October to December, she, she averaged over $90 in profits a month. And those profits have had a considerable impact on her welfare. She's been able to um, use those profits to invest in other businesses, diversifying her income streams and increasing her household resilience. So she's expanded a chicken, chicken rearing business and she's used some of the profits to buy farm inputs. And she's also used some of the profits to pay for her grandchildren to get transportation to school because they live quite far away from the school building. So she's been able to also use these profits to invest in the next generation. So just to kind of um, make one last point, um, these, this shows how data can be used to better target soy kits to uh, perhaps the most um, likely to be successful entrepreneurs. It shows how we can use this information to help entrepreneurs improve their outcomes. Um, but we actually believe that there's a lot more we can be doing with data as well. So we're seeking to increase some of our data collection activities um, to look at questions such as, what are the impact of soy kits on community nutrition um, as a result of having something like soy milk now available in communities? So we're very excited about that. So thank you very much. And that's um, all for my presentation. Thank you, Liz. We all love success stories. Good to hear. Um, we're going to keep going and allow Cesar Kachali from uh, Catholic Relief Services to take over. Uh, Cesar is here to tell us about how entrepreneurs can utilize credit for their soy dairy startups. Uh, Cesar, please begin your presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Ami. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, Catholic Relief Services in Malawi was one of the organizations that benefited from 66 soy kits from Agdiv. So in this presentation, uh, in fact, as Ami said, I, I, I will share with you how we utilize the credits in our programs to start up soy kit entrepreneurs. And uh, to do this, I will use three, five, uh, I'll use five points. I will describe to you what the structure, the structure that we used to carry the, the innovations. And then I will explain again why soy milk processing, we, we did it in soy groups, and then the roles of the soy groups, and then the approach and the monitoring and evaluation. So if I briefly just to explain how we, 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 we rolled out the, 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 the soy kit promotion, we used the, the, the silk structure that was embedded in our HIV AIDS program. So under the silk, as you can see from the picture, it's just a community savings and lending approach where groups come together, they pull their savings and then uh, have access to, to loans which they can use to start various businesses. The next slide, please. Now, on why we, we promoted soy milk processing in the soy groups, we promoted it because in the soy groups, the, the participants already are already trained in small business selection, planning, and management. So this one, the coming in of the soy, uh, the soy kids was more like to diversify on the business choices that the, the members of the soy groups have. And also to give them opportunity to the group members to use their loans or to, to own to own the soy kit. And it also it also came in as a value addition because most of the members they also produce soy 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 soya beans. So for them they usually sell their soy beans as raw and this one enabled them to value add or in fact on the soy beans to produce the soy milk that they can later sell to the communities around them. It also came in to increase on member savings. Most of the businesses that the people do in the in, in the catchments where we're working Usually they sell, sell they, they sell agriculture products, raw agriculture products, hawking, and then also maybe some firewoods and all that. So this one came in to, 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 to further increase on the number of businesses that the communities can, if the members can do, and also increase on the member savings. It also came in for the social support from the members, because the silk members support the member, if the silk in their in their group. I will explain how they select the, the, the entrepreneurs within the silk groups in the coming slides. It also came in to strengthen household economic resilience. 
So the businesses, as they produce, they sell the, the, the soy milk on their basis, it brings income to the households that they can use for the various, for their various needs. It also came in for the nutrition aspect. As much as we promote the soy kits for selling the soy milk, but most of the soy milk is also consumed at home. Most of the soy milk is also used by the children as they are going to school. In Malawi, there is a culture where most of the school kids, they take this drink, fizzy drinks when they are going to school. And in the household where they are producing the soy kits, they are, can now, they can, we have seen some shifts where children now are resorting to taking the soy milk vis-a-vis -vis the substituting the, the fizzy drinks that they were taking before. And this again brings in a saving to the household. So instead of buying the, the soy kits now, they can, they can use the, 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 the soy milk for their children. Now, coming to the, to, the, to the laws of the silk group, how we promoted the soy kits, we use the silk group approach where we have uh, the project approach where we are using the case plan. The case plan is just a quick approach where we work with the households to come up with an objective and a goal towards the business that they choose. So the soy beans, I mean the soy kits, we are also coming in to, into the approach to you using this, the, the, the same case plan, the case plan approach where we sat down with the households, discuss with them if they could go for the for the soy for the soil entrepreneurship and then set goals with them and then set the targets with them so that work together to achieve their, their targets. And it also, the soil key, the, the soil groups also enable the households, to, more households to access the, the soil milk processing from the group person scheme. We introduce the soil kit at the person scheme where each group was given, if, if a, a selected groups were given a soil kit, which would then be paid, they were provided on a loan, which they will pay back to the group and then it will enable the group to ask for another soy kit from the from Ag, from Agdiv through the capital group services, which is they will buy now on cash basis until all the members of the soy groups accesses that. They, for us, the plan is to have at least five members for each group have a soy kit. This is there to reduce or to prevent any competition that may be there if all the members are producing the soy kit. Noting that some of the buyers of the soy milk are also members of the soy group. So we limited it to about five, uh, in fact, five entrepreneurs per silk group. And then looking at the catchment where they come from or the catchment of the silk groups, it's easier for them to at least provide enough soy milk to the catchment of the, of the silk group. The silk groups also provide the security for the soy kit. As you provide the silk group on loan, it's not provided to individuals. The silk, the, the, the silk kits, the, the soy kits are provided to the group. The soy kit becomes uh, the, 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 a product of the beneficiary when they have paid the loan in full to the silk group. And then the silk group will use the, 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 the repayment to ask for another uh, soy kit, which is then given to another person to continue uh, if producing the soy kits in the communities. And then the silk groups also provide an easy hands-on lesson. How they do it, each group once they get the first soy kit, they will identify two other follow-on beneficiaries. So once the first beneficiary pays back the loan, the second beneficiary will get the loan. I will, will get the soy kit, which will be bought now from the money paid from the first beneficiary. And then the third one will also get it from the money paid from the second beneficiary until the fifth one gets the soy kit. So in that way, as the third beneficiary uses the soy kit, the second beneficiary learns, the first beneficiary invites the second beneficiary to come to the first beneficiary to learn on how to manage the, the, soy, the, the, the soy kit, how to market the soy, bean, the, the soy milk, and then also how to do the profit calculations and the marketing uh, calculation. The soy kits also provide the complementary promotion from the silk group members, where the silk group members also support the, 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 their fellow member to market the soy, the, the soy milk within the community. So each time they meet, the entrepreneur asks the, 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 the group members to help with marketing the, the soy milk in their, uh, within their neighborhood. And also the, 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 the silk groups promoted the demand-based soy milk processing, where before they identify a person to benefit from the, from the soy kit, the silk group meets and then assesses the person. There are some criteria that they use that I will cover as I go later on. Then once they identify that one, it's a person now who has really shown the interest to, to, to use the, the soy, the, if at the soy kit. And it allows the selection of, of the beneficiaries within the silk group, thereby limiting it to only the people who really showed the need to do the silk 
entrepreneurship. And then the use of the group member as an initial model of the soil make, where now as there is one member within the group doing the, 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 the soil milk production, he becomes the model or she becomes the model in the community or within the group, which creates now the demand of more soy kids in the communities surrounding that soil group. The next slide. Now, you will see from the, 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 now going to how we approach the, 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 the promotion of the soy kids, the participants enrollment emphasize on the in fact on the, our program's the case plan. As I said before, there is a, always a case plan where we meet with the households, discuss with them on their challenges, and then what they can do to tackle their challenges. And one of the things was to, on household economic strengthening. That's where the soy kit came in. So using the case plan, if a household chose to do soy, soy milk entrepreneurship, it was through the case plan where the household and the field agent start and set goals and targets on how they will manage the soil entrepreneurship business. And through that, there's the continuous support from the field agents in helping the household to attain the set goals. So out of this, there's active group membership where now the groups always is there to support the household that gets the, the soil kit. And then they also consider the payment, the payment residency. The soil groups are the ones who finally approves whether one gets the soil kit or not. So they will look at, okay, what's the payment? In, in fact, how, how long has the person been there? How long has they been participating in the soil group? Are they selling any, have they done any business? Have they, are they, are, 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 are they sold or are they, have they been involved in selling any physical drinks, for example, or water? So those are the criteria, some of the criteria that some groups use to ascertain or to approve a household that has uh, requested to, 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 to venture into soil milk. Uh, entrepreneurship. The silk community agents, these are the field people who support the silk members, are also trained on the soil kit so that they can also provide the support to the households during their home visits. The silk community agents also visit the households on, for, to, to, for the small business selection planning and management. And in their plans, they also included the support on soil kit entrepreneurs, how to manage the, 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 the soil kits and then helping the households who have problems and then work together to attend their set goals and targets. The groups use the group ledger book where the payments are deposited to. So each time an entrepreneur pays back, the amount that is paid goes into the ledger book where they record the various savings and loans for each member of the soil group. And then the group members are also allowed to borrow from these uh, repayments from the initial savings. And then they borrow at a profit. So the profits, somehow supports the entrepreneur to finish the loan quickly. This one is a plus to the group because when this entrepreneur finishes the, the payment, it will require it will allow the group to access another soy kit that they will give to another member. So this one was deliberately done to help the group support the entrepreneur in paying back for the loan and in a way help the group to access the next loan quickly. So the member that they borrow, they borrow on a profit, it goes back to the same ledger. Once it reaches the eighty dollars, then the group asks the the cattle group services to ask Agdi for another soy kit, and then that soy kit will be given to the second, the first in line to receive the soy kit. Also on and so on until the fifth person gets the soy kit. The next slide, please. Then the group identify and select the second line participants, as I said from the beginning. So when they are selecting the first person to get the soy kit, they also determine the second and the third participant. So these are the ones now who also work hand in hand with the entrepreneur, encouraging him, inspiring the, the first entrepreneur to finalize the payment of the loan so that they can also uh, get their loan, I mean, their soy kit quickly. And then this one also allows the, 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 the first entrepreneur to not think about running away with the kit. In Malawi, of course, some households, once they have this, group things, they, there is the tendency to run away with the kids or to run away with things that they get. But with these two, they're always on the house, all their eyes on the household, which are the initial kids, because that's where they know their second kid will come from. And the silk groups also offer the market and inspiration to the respective circuit. So all the members, they inspire. When there are challenges, sometimes we have cases where the two group members come together, promote the soy milk as a group during maybe a set date where they will move around the trade centers, promoting the consumption of the milk on behalf of their fellow member. This is done 
for them to enhance the, 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 to support the person, sell more milk so that they can repay their loans and later on the groups can access another loan and another soy kit which they can give to another person. The second slide, the second slide please. Now on the monitoring and evaluation, we are using the monitoring and evaluation where, as stated by Charity, we, the entrepreneurs submit monthly reports. The monthly reports are submitted to the to their silk community agent. That's the agent that looks uh, manages the silk group in their in their community. So the the monthly soy kit report, as you can see in the picture, and as explained by Charity before, has the daily income and then the expenditure and the profits and the quantity of milk. But there is also a column which that says how much they have paid back to the group. So this one, as a, as a tool, is also used by the community agents to determine whether the household is on track on the goals that they set at the beginning of the case management process when they are getting the, the loan. So this one again informs the community agents on which households are stronger and which ones are weaker. So in a way, the community agents plan properly on which households requires more home visits and which households requires fewer home visits. Because most community agents, they will visit more of the households where there are problems than the households where they are performing well. So they use these reports again to determine what support they can give to the household. But the case plan again, helps them to discuss with them freely on what are the challenges that they are facing that may be beyond the marketing aspect. So if it is beyond the marketing aspect, they will include the other players which will sit down with the household and then discuss the way forward for them to meet their state target, which they, they, they discussed or wrote or come jot down at the beginning of the, in fact, when they were getting the, the soy kit. The next slide. So under the same monitoring evaluation, the program uses the three cadre supervision where we have the households which are visited by the silk community agents. And then the silk community agents usually meet, we call them the microfinance officers. These are the people who use the motorcycles and they have more, about six or eight community agents. And these community agents has about 11 soy, soy entrepreneurs. So the community agents are the one who do their home visits and then the microfinance officers are the ones who check or support the community agents. So as a group, there is that continued flow of support to, this, uh, to the soy entrepreneur using the existing silk group structures, which now incorporates the soy kit as a, one of the businesses that the silk group members are doing. And then the community agents are the ones who do the home visits and also they meet the entrepreneurs during the silk group visits. Most often, each and every meeting, the entrepreneur presents a feedback to the group on how the soy kit business is, uh, the soy entrepreneurship is, is, is going. So during that presentation to the suit groups, the soil entrepreneur gets the support again from the members. If the thing is about marketing, then the members devise a way on how best they can promote the soil kit in their communities to support or to help the, 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 the entrepreneur to have more buyers and then the payback. So this one again, provide the checks and balances, frequent or regular checks and balances to the entrepreneur in terms of how and when or and which are the problems that they're facing so that the groups can come in and help. Most often the supervision is done through phone calls, it's done through text messages, it's done through home visits, and also through the silk groups. The same way the, the, the households do the reports to the community agents who verify them, checks them, takes the actions, and then they send them to the microfinance officers who submits the reports to CRS for submission to ADG. I think that's how we, we have utilized the, the, the silk groups to promote this soil entrepreneur. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caesar. That was very interesting. We appreciate you being with us today. Um, it's now time to go ahead and launch our fourth and final poll of the webinar. Wait just a minute here. All right. How do you think soy kit entrepreneurs should be selected? Please select one answer. We'll give everyone a few moments. Okay, and we'll be closing the poll in three, two, one.
Okay, a little bit of a distribution there. Thank you very much for your feedback, everyone. I'm going to keep on rolling here as we're running a little late. Um, our last presentation will focus on how you can successfully incorporate data-driven strategy into development programs. This topic will be presented by Jeremy Venable. Jeremy, thanks for being here. Feel free to get started whenever you're ready. All right, good. Um, so my work kind of comes in after all the hard work has been done, either by the technical team, um, the partners, and ultimately the beneficiaries. Um, and so as you can see by joining this uh, webinar today, uh, the USAID Active Project and the Soybean Innovation Lab like talking about soy dairy. Um, and that's kind of my role um, in terms of talking to partners um, and talking to the clients and the funder. Um, and so we did, in order for us to do that, uh, I'm going to kind of go through, through three areas of uh, of how we do that. Um, the first one is what we've been talking about today, which was kind of the design and the monitoring of the implementation of activities. Um, that's what's generating the data that I then use to talk with partners and clients. Um, and then I'll kind of go through how we use that data to talk with a client, in this case, USAID, but it's really relevant to any sort of client or funder that you might be working with. Um, and the big ones there is we're able to benefit or we're able to discuss and show the benefits of this program up front. We have that data and we can present it to anybody. Um, next slide is then kind of talking about how we scale this up with different partners. We just had um, the discussion or the presentation by CRS, which was an early partner in the pilot but is also now going to be a partner in the scale up. Um, and what's helpful in that discussion is being able to put forward a well thought out collaboration where we know the outcomes, we know at least one way or a starting way on how to deliver this to the communities and to the beneficiaries. And then that allows an open collaboration to take part. Um, Going to the next slide, design and monitoring of activities. Um, so at least for me, and I think for a lot of people, soy dairy was a fairly new concept to, to work on in this sort of environment, uh, like Malawi, with rural or peri-urban households. And we needed to make sure that this activity met our nutritional targets as a program. Um, and we needed to make sure that we could monitor those results. However, when we started looking at soy dairy, since it was a new activity, there wasn't a lot of rigorous evidence around the impact it had on nutrition or economic livelihood improvement. So we needed to work and put that data together. And that really started by working with the technical teams and our monitoring and evaluation team and our project economist. We had to make sure that when we started this pilot, everything was in place to collect the data that we needed. Um, and, a big, and a big part of that was making sure we correct, collected the correct type of data and enough data that we could really tell the story and ultimately share the impact and the outcome of this. Um, so I think you've kind of seen each sort of data that we've used today in the presentation. And that's the basic output data reported by the beneficiaries or the partners. What are the soy kits or the soy cows producing? You know, that's the basic, you know, the basic piece of data that we've looked at today. The next one were these kind of, we call them spot checks, but they're the small surveys that we do with partners and beneficiaries that dig a little bit deeper um, you know, and that was the story presented today in a couple of the presentations to see what challenges are being had by the users, what lessons learned, success stories, and ways that we can improve uh, the delivery of the programs. And then ultimately the outcomes and the impact of this sort of activity. And that's been put together both by the uh, team on this side and also the team at Soybean Innovation Lab and 
having the resources to dig into that sort of data has really helped us tell the story as you've seen today. Um, so going on to the next slide, um, you know, from the from the first poll with a lot of uh, the participants coming from uh, the NGO sector, you guys are dealing often with clients or funders as well. And we we have to do that as well at USAID. And so when presenting a new technology like soy dairy, it's been very helpful for us to have all the evidence and the data to back that up. Um, and even after a pilot activity, we've been able to show a lot of success. And now we're using that to scale up this activity in Malawi. And we're presenting it to USAID in a regional and also a global manner that says, look, here's a really neat activity. It addresses nutrition and it addresses livelihoods in a community. And we're seeing a lot of successes across different sort of partners, different communities, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the, what's growing out of that is why we're doing webinars like today is that we want to share this data. We want to share this story so that other people can speak with their clients and their funders um, and we can help make that data and those lessons learned available to you. Going on to the next slide, um, sharing with partners. Um, so we've talked with CRS or we've listened from CRS today and that's been, they've been a very good partner, but we've been able to share with them a lot of data and work together to look at that and figure out how the best impact or how we can do achieve the best impact for their, their uh, beneficiaries. And we can do that because we have the data there, we have the experience, and we can work together to help adapt that to their needs. Um, and so that's been a quite a good example for it. Um, And so when I talk with partners uh, about various activities, soy dairy is one of the easier ones I have getting across. And that's just because we have a lot of the information and partners can visualize that we have data, we have the stories, and that just really helps the conversation move forward. Um, and so that's just kind of a quick overview of how we kind of see the next steps of moving from implementation, data collection, and then the scale up. Uh, so thank you for joining today and hanging in there till the last presentation. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate yep. you being here with us today. Thanks. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and dive into all the great questions everyone submitted. Um, I hope you all stick around. We're running a little late, but we'll see what we can get to. Um, Liz Venable will be the moderator for our Q&A session today. I'm going to go ahead and let her get started that so we can try and get as many of your questions answered before we conclude for the day. Thanks, Liz. Sure. So, hi again. We have received a number of great questions and we'll try to get to quite a few of them today. Um, but some of them, especially some of the more technical ones, we might actually see if we can send out answers, written responses to them as a follow-up to this, um, just so we can answer more completely and accurately. Um, but again, we'll try to get through um, as many as we can within our time frame today. So my first question today um, will be for uh, Maggie. And this question comes from Francisca Addy from Ghana with the um, Savannah Agricultural Research Institute, sorry. So this question is, Maggie, how long can soy milk or soy yogurt stay without storing in a fridge? And are there any means for rural entrepreneurs in a community without electricity to preserve their milk? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the soy milk or soy yogurt, is very perishable. So if you process uh, soy milk using the uh, method that we talked about, it can take about um, four hours to eight hours before it goes bad. So 
The most important thing for the entrepreneurs is to study their market. First of all, uh, they don't have to overproduce because if they go out to the market and uh, don't find as many uh, customers as possible, then uh, they, if they bring their soy milk back, they won't be able to, it, it won't be able to keep overnight. But however, uh, working with uh, Livango Investor of Agriculture and Natural Resources, they've been able to uh, produce their milk and uh, it has been able, they've been able to keep it on shelf for uh, up to about uh, eight hours. And uh, there are some other entrepreneurs that have kept their milk for a period of uh, two days. But this is after adding some preservatives. Yeah, that's how I can answer that question. Sure, thanks, Maggie. And if I remember correctly, um, you, you've also done some work um, with the soy cow cooperatives in this area um, to help them manage their supply and um, keep it refrigerated, correct? Yes. Yeah, um, what we have done, uh, so can you continue your question? Yeah, so just um, if you could maybe talk about what you've done with the soy cow um, cooperatives to help them with refrigeration. Yes, uh, what we've done with the soy cow co-ops uh, is, uh, first of all, uh, we have worked with them to identify a nearby source where they can uh, keep their product. If they don't have a refrigerator, we always encourage them because uh, most of them are stationed near a uh, market center where there are some uh, other people with a refrigerator and they can rent out the refrigerator, pay a little bit of money and to keep their products. And uh, this has really helped them. But uh, for some of the entrepreneurs, uh, we've been able to um, help them so that uh, the additional income that they make. Uh, there is one uh, cooperative that has been able to uh, uh, procure a refrigerator uh, from the additional income that uh, they've been able to make from uh, soy, soy milk uh, processing. And also um, the other method, method that they have used to preserve their soy milk is uh, immediately after uh, they take out uh, the soy milk in, uh, from the, the cooker because uh, the soy milk comes out uh, really hot. They let it cool a bit. And uh, when they are bottling their soy milk, they put it in a cold bath so that uh, to allow the natural cooling of the product. And uh, also, there is also the method of uh, the hot seeding. Uh, some of the entrepreneurs have used the hot seeding method whereby they put the milk in the bottle while it's uh, very hot. And uh, they invert the bottle, put it out upside down to remove all the microbes and uh, anything that uh, would be in the bottle. And uh, that milk, uh, these uh, entrepreneurs, especially the Luana, the you know, University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, they've been able to keep their milk using, uh, after using this uh, method for a period of two weeks. And uh, Caesar, did you want to add anything about um, your experience with your entrepreneurs on this issue? Yes, if, if I just, if I think the case of uh, in the case of soy, the, the, the soy kits, where we have out of the our 66, most of the, during the case management process that I mentioned, the households that are setting the, 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 the goals, most of them over 80%, they usually slot in the procurement of a freezer as one of their main goals from, so, from, from their involvement in soy milk processing. And out of the three that have procured the, so, the, the, the freezer, they are able to keep their milk for about two or three days. So what, how they do it, they only take enough when they are going to the trading centers for sale and then return back to replenish when what they took, if it got exhausted. So each time they are coming back home, get enough that they will sell and then return until they finalize the, 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 the one that they produce before they venture into another production. So they will produce maybe every second or third thing. Thank you. That's what I wanted to add based on what is these small, small entrepreneurs that we are, we are working with. 
Thank you. Sure. And Caesar, while I've got you on here, um, the next question's for you. So we had a couple questions come in um, regarding kind of how much soy entrepreneurs are actually spending up their time on this in, endeavor. So it was noted that the average production that soy kit entrepreneurs are um, producing is less than they would produce if they were doing um, soy kit production with soy kits all day long. And the amount of money that they're earning is not a full-time wage. Um, and so my question for you is, do you have a sense of how much time, um, how many hours per day or how many days a week most entrepreneurs are spending on soy kit activities? Yes, thank you so much, Rich, for that. Yeah, in fact, that's an experience that we are also making. So most of the households, they will produce based on their on their market. Most of the buyers, they are, they, we have two sets of uh, entrepreneurs. There are some who sell from their homes, where the buyers come to the homes to buy the soy milk. And then there are some who take the soy milk to the trade centers, where they will line in the market and then people buy from there. For those who always buy from or sell from their home, they usually produce their soy milk between five and eight in the morning, so that they start selling it between seven and ten in the morning. So this one, their target is for those households that are residing around that household, and they use the soy milk for their tea, or coffee, and their morning morning drinks. And most of these, they will buy the hot soy milk. For those who always take it to the market. They also produce using the, through the same time, but they will take it to the market around nine. And most of these, they will sell the cold, the cold soy milk. They also produce in the afternoon. There is also a big market in the afternoon as people are getting out from, the, from their work. The, our project catchment is in the Periaban. It's around the Longue city. So when the people are coming out from the city to the to the communities or from the big major trade centers to the communities within their villages, they pass by to take a drink of the soy milk. So these ones also, they can buy a cold one or a hot one. So most of them, they will produce in the morning, five to eight, and in the afternoon between three and four. And most of them, as Mike mentioned, they will produce based on their market. As they keep, as they, as they study their sell, if they their milk sales, they will determine how much they can they can sell within that five to eight and the three to four uh, stages, and then they will produce just enough for the people who come to buy from them. Thank you. I'm sure I, I, I don't know if I've responded to that to, if I did that question. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Caesar. And then I have a question for Charity now. Um, so Charity, a couple of our participants were wondering about the competitors to um, soy milk. Um, so we had a question um, from Tegwe with Seedco in Zimbabwe and from Jonathan Thomas um, as well, asking about, um, so first of all, how does the price of soy milk compare to the price of cow's milk? And then the kind of follow-up question is, what products are, is soy milk replacing or what, do, what kind of product demand um, might soy milk be replacing? Thank you very much. Uh, the price for soy milk and soy uh, and cow milk. Uh, in the on the market shelf, when you find the processed soy milk, maybe from those imported uh, from other countries, it's very expensive compared to the cow milk that is in the shelf or in the shops. But when we go to the communities, uh, there are also local uh, entrepreneurs for the soy cow, I mean, for the soy milk and also the cow milk. Therefore, when we are training the entrepreneurs, if their area or their communities, there are a lot of uh, producers of, of cow milk, we mostly advise them to lower the price a little bit so that there's a reduced competition with the uh, cow milk and also the soy milk. So the entrepreneurs are advised to reduce 
the price of their uh, soy milk so that they are a little bit lower compared to those that are selling cow milk so that their products are also on demand or they should also be selling. Um, on another note, the product that uh, soy milk is replacing mostly are the fizzy drinks. Please, I mentioned that mostly in several communities, there are these fizzy drinks that are comprised of sugar and water that mostly are freezed and they are sold in most schools and the markets in the rural areas or in the urban or peri-urban areas. So the coming in of soy milk, especially in schools in other communities that, are, that have got entrepreneurs that are producing the uh, soy milk is replacing those products. So yeah, I think you have answered the, uh, your questions. Yeah, thanks, Charity. And then I have one last quick question, and this will be for both Maggie and Caesar, I believe. Um, so this question comes to us both from Abubakar Diara in Mali with the Syngenta Foundation, as well as from Awer Estenafos Gebre in Ethiopia. Is there any way for entrepreneurs outside of Malawi to get access to soy cow or soy kit technology? Yeah. Thank you very much for that question. Yes, yeah, there's a great opportunity for entrepreneurs to get these uh, equipment, whether it's a soy cow or a soy kit. Um, the soy, both technologies were uh, developed or invented by Malnutrition Matters, as I mentioned uh, during my presentation. And uh, Malnutrition Matters is a Canadian uh, NGO uh, who have uh, worked with these soy cows and soy kids in uh, uh, different countries. I know in Ghana and uh, in Mozambique, they have a lot of, uh, of soy, uh, soy cows. So uh, maybe after the webinar, we can share the uh, contacts of uh, the uh, people at Malnutrition Matters and you can link with them directly to order your own. And uh, I think, I don't know if I mentioned during my presentation that uh, the landed cost of uh, soy cow here in Malawi is around $5,400. But it's an excellent uh, uh, equipment that if well managed, uh, and if you are producing around 200, uh, I mean, uh, 200 liters of uh, soy milk in a day, and if you are producing like every day, that's a big volume of milk that you can uh, use and uh, make an income out of. And uh, even for the soy kids, the same uh, company, NGO, Malnutrition Matters, and um, uh, it depends, and uh, you can contact them and uh, order them for the initial uh, kits, and you can even, uh, they can even, uh, it, uh, the beauty of the kit is that it also comes with the training manual. It's uh, easy to use. So yes, to answer your question, uh, anywhere else, you can get them. I learned about the, the soy cows and uh, the soy kids in Ghana. So looking at uh, how important they are in uh, providing income and nutrition, then we, when we came back, uh, we worked with uh, the uh, Soybean Innovation Lab to bring in our initial uh, equipment, which we piloted. And uh, we are continuing the, the, the project now with uh, scaling up with different partners like CRS. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, in our case, as Catholic Research says, it was more like a benefit from you said to you said collaboration. So it was like you said food for peace, layering its activities on your you said paper. So our program was a you said HIV funded program. So it, it, it had that collaboration and then it benefited from that collaboration where you said food, uh, uh, food for peace layered its uh, intervention on, on our paper program. So this collaboration, if it's there in the countries, you can also look around if there is a football piece who are doing that. And then you are also using collaboration, it's easier for the two programs to, to touch base and then lay other activities from one program to, to the other. Thank you. Great, thanks, Caesar. So I think that's all the time we have for questions today, unfortunately. But as I said, we'll try to um, respond in writing to the full slate of questions we received. And we really appreciate the interest and participation.
Great, thank you, Liz. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, big thank you to, to, to Liz, Maggie, Charity, Caesar, and Jeremy for taking the time to uh, be with us today. I'd also like to thank all of our great attendees today for your interaction and feedback. Um, as Liz said, we'll get your questions answered as soon as we can uh, via email written response. Um, and this concludes uh, the critical success factors for soil theory development and scaling webinar. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, today's webinar has been recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to you in a follow-up email. When you exit the webinar today, you'll be asked to complete a short exit survey. We really appreciate all of your feedback and the time you spent with us, so please take just a few moments to complete this survey. Uh, we rely heavily on these surveys to learn how to improve our webinars and to find out uh, what content you're interested in for future webinars. So again, thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day or evening. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.